Vendetta 2022. We're joined by Gray McDowell, Dustin Johnson, and Harold Barger III, all past champions here at Royal Green Golf Clubs. Welcome, guys. Thank, Thank you for you. being here. And over to the media. Mike, go ahead. I just wanted to ask each of you guys, what do you like most about this course? Obviously, having won on it before, you won twice. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's a, it's a really good golf course. Uh, wind blows here. I think you have to hit a lot of different shots. Um, you know, it, it asks all the questions. You got to, you know, put it in the fairway and some key tee shots. But, um, you know, to me, it's just a big iron play golf course. You have to control your ball well. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it, it can really play difficult. You know, I think this wind that blows out of the west, which is left right on 16, pretty much the prevailing wind here. And I think... Uh, all of us up here have seen that wind and obviously played well in that wind direction. So, you know, looking forward to, uh, you know, trying to have a good weekend here. Yeah, I mean, I, along with what Graham said, it's just, you know, I like that it, the wind picks up every afternoon. It seems like, well, every day about, probably just about now, it'll start blowing and, and it makes it challenging. And you got to hit, you got quality iron shots. You got to drive it well, too, because fairways are pretty narrow. And if you're in the rough, it's really hard to control the golf ball. So, um, I think it kind of makes you do everything well if you want to shoot good scores. Yeah, I think it's pretty simple. I think we like winning more than anything. Um, yeah, the golf course is great, but, you know, at the end of the day, you, you play to, you know, win tournaments. And for me, I, I haven't won as much as these guys. And um, the way I won is pretty awesome. So uh, that's what I would say. I, I have not, no. I literally just saw it. I just got here like two minutes ago. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. I would love to do it again for the Nimblicks to get on the podium, though. That'd be pretty awesome. Uh, Harold, um, how much have you thought about what that win meant for you? Obviously, he bolted you up in the world rankings. He got his Masters. Uh, things that came with yeah, I, I thought about it a lot. I got into the Masters, and I got in every other major. Um, played well once I won. Uh, obviously, things went a little crazy when we got back to the States. Um, so, you know, just new – Adversity in my life, you know, it's pretty weird to win and be hated, so it's pretty funny, I think. <laughs> Thank you. Or anyone, that, that, that's the case. And why is it inevitable? You want me to go or are you? Oh, Graham's got this thought. I'll let him go. <laughs> well, I, I think it's impossible for the guys to give us assurances. You know, I mean, we we all agree. And I think, you know, most people in world golf would agree that, um, you know, the field out here is to a certain strength now where, you know, it's impossible to ignore the talent that's out here. I mean, this guy standing in the middle uh, of the three of us, um, if his world ranking is inaccurate, then the whole system's inaccurate, you know? So, uh, you know, all, the only assurances that we get from Liv is that we're ticking all the boxes that we can tick and, you know, continue to do what is necessary for the OWGR to look at us the right way. And, uh, you know, hopefully it's inevitable, but, you know, the longer it goes on, the games that are being played, um, you know, we're, we're, we're all we want is a is a kind of a a fair court, if you like, and uh, you know to recognize exactly that it is, what it is that we're doing out here. And I, you know, like I said, I, I feel like Liv tried to do all everything they possibly can to be legitimate in the eyes of the OWGR. I mean, we've got some quality quality players out here, and to me, thank you, Grant. You know, the world rankings, so, Harold. <laughs> love you lots. Um, you know the word official has to go away from OWGR if they don't if they don't take care of the players that are playing out here. That was unbelievable, Graham. Yeah. Thanks. Well, well said. Um, <laughs> I, for me, I uh, I think we knew what we were getting into. I think um, I think it's easy to sit here and say what could happen, what should happen. But you know, obviously, you know, for me, I I knew what was going to happen. You know, like it wasn't going to be easy. And I think the people that live have done an unbelievable job of just trying to. Because I don't know the check marks. I could, you know, honestly, I could care less. I knew exactly what was going to happen. I knew what could happen in my career. And, you know, I accept that, you know. And it's I've had a great time out here. So, like, the world ranking thing is, you know, we, it's just been a part of golf for so long. And now, all of a sudden, you know, some feathers have been ruffled. So, it's like kind of 
It's just awkward. It's funny, though, I think. But it is what it is. No, man. Quit, kind of calm down. I'm not trying to get cut. I don't know what it takes, to be honest with you. Um, obviously, they inform us all the time and give us updates. And, you know, obviously, we're super thankful for that. But, like, I'm pretty, you know, just in the middle. Yeah, do we deserve it? Yeah, the field's unbelievable. So it's, uh, it's sad sometimes. I just laugh and just keep going. I like playing golf. These guys are a lot of fun. I think it's really cool how we hang out and do things that we, you know, don't do as much on the PJ Tour. I think it's very big. They call it uh, family. And whenever you leave that family, you become hated. And in a real family, like, no matter what your son does or your daughter, she's their family. So you take care of them, and it's just not that way. Thanks. Uh, I, I think they covered it all. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, Teddy Fenton with Luckiest Golfers on Earth. Um, Graham, you, you just said that they're incomplete, the, the world ranking points. And if, if they're incomplete and they're clearly using stall tactics to, <clears throat> to push this down the road as far as they can, if they're inaccurate, does it make sense for another organization to step up and do the job that they're not doing? You mean to have another set of rankings? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Harold Varner, yeah, what about that guy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know enough about the technicalities regards, you know, another ranking system, if, if someone was to create another ranking system. Um, you know, to me, when I look at the UWGR, it is to give everyone a fair opportunity around the globe who, you know, is a professional player playing in a strength of field that's relative to be uh, recognized uh, within that ranking system to give everyone a fair crack at the whip, you know. So, you know, like I said, I, I love the fact that Liv's been so transparent with us trying to make sure that they're ticking all the boxes, do the job that they need to, to do to get a fair case with the OWGR, um, you know. The guys that sit on that board, I mean, obviously there's a huge amount of confliction on that board. And the longer this goes on, uh, we have a huge amount of deterioration in current world ranking points for the guys out here. You know, and if that doesn't retrospectively kind of get taken care of, you know, by the time that we do get ranking points, our strength of field is going to be relatively much less than it needs to be, you know. So we just get hurt the longer that this game gets played uh, and uh, it needs to be taken care of ASAP. I mean, obviously, I mean, Graham pretty much summed it up, you know, exactly what I think about this all. It's, it's we're going to get world ranking points, you know, it's, right now it's a matter of when. And, yeah, I mean, just the longer it, the longer it takes, the, you know, obviously the, the, the more irrelevant it becomes for us because it's, you know, if you wait too long, all our rankings are going to drop so much that it's not even going to really... It's not going to matter. So yeah, hopefully they do the right thing and, you know, we'll know something here in the next week or so. And, you know, like I said, hopefully they do the right thing and give us points and then it, this will all be over. We won't have to talk about it anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd... Oh, shit, my bad. He's talking. The European tour being involved? Correct. You know, well, listen, I mean, I, when I won this tournament in 2020, I was very much like Harold, you know, this, it got my golf game back on track and my life back on track to where I wanted to be in the game. No one questioned me about, you know, the people that were paying the bills and the country that I'd won the golf tournament. And there was absolutely no politics involved. Um, you know, the European tour had brought um, a nation to the table that were curious about the game of golf and that wanted to um, that wanted to be involved, and, and that was exciting. You know, the European Tour have obviously played a huge amount of golf out here in the Middle East and been incredibly successful with that. So, to me, this was just another great opportunity to come to, you know, uh, a, a nation that were wanting to put money into the game of golf. And when I won here in 2020, it was um, 
you know, same as Harold, got me back in the top 50 in the world, got me in the Masters, got me doing all the things that I had missed for a few years. And uh, it was a huge win for me at the time. And it was uh, something I was very proud of, you know. So here we stand two years later, two and a half years later. And I mean, the golfing globe, you know, has changed so much. And, and the, you know, the opinions on what we're doing here in this country have, you know, done a full 180. It's, it's you know, it's you know, obviously there's a huge amount of that is... Uh, you know, not real and just created by the media, unfortunately. Graham, that is so good. Man. I don't even know if I could put an answer together like that. <laughs> uh, Jim, Sean McKenna, Inside Golf Australia and Bendy Golf. Um, to the golf, uh, do you find playing in courses like this in the environmental conditions here that your ball distances and flights can change on not only a daily basis but an hourly basis? and it's a bit different from other parts of the world where you can see fairly consistent weather patterns. So I'm just interested in how the heat and the, the changes in the wind and even the atmosphere with the dust particles, because you guys are so precise, how that can affect your game while you're actually playing in the middle of the round here. To, to me, it goes the same distance, but Bryson probably could answer that a little bit better. <laughs> He's got it down to the edge, but for me, the ball goes just normal distance. Far, yeah. real far. You just hit it far. I mean, it goes normal. It always goes far, <laughs> DJ. I know, that's normal, right? <laughs> <laughs> Asshole. But does the, you know, the daily conditions, can they change dramatically in relation to the way you structure your game around the course here? I think the weather's been unbelievable, the events I've played. Last week it rained and that was it. And it rains in America too when we play and we have thunderstorms. So I think it's pretty – I don't think anything's really I different. I did think the ball last week was traveling a long way, though. <clears throat> I don't carry yardage books, so I don't really know. I just hit it and be like, all right, let's go. Oh. I've never carried a yard spot. Wow. I think it it's not sense. my greatest thing in the world. That's awesome. It makes sense. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Ricey, what is it? All right, man. Uh, so, DJ, you're uh, $18 million richer as of uh, Sunday night. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, just wondering, how would you describe the, this four and a half month journey you've had with Liv? Has it met your expectations, exceeded them? So how, how would you? No. I don't know. We were talking about this yesterday. I'm, you know, I was really regretting my decision to come here. You know, it's just been terrible. Yeah. You know, I was, I was sitting there last night thinking about it, and yeah, it was, it was really bothering me a lot. Yeah. I know. I just, yeah. Just can't get over it. So we have uh, some local media here. They're asking questions in Arabic, and I'll be translating. Sure. We open the floor to them now. So Sultan is from the Saudi press agency and he's welcoming you guys back to Saudi Arabia and he's asking you in terms of you guys being former winners here in Saudi and this time around you're coming but for a different tournament with a different system. You used to be of course but is this going to be any different and how are you planning on attacking this? Uh, because it is for everyone. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to attack it the same way. Um, our team played well. I mean, these guys have played more events than I have. Um, I'm just really invested in the team. I, I really like it. We, uh, we're one stroke out of podium. Uh, so I, that part of it, to me, is super fun. Uh, we're underdogs, and, you know, we're just trying to take out the aces. I don't even know what team Graham plays for, but Max, I want to take Max. them out too. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, it's just competitive. Uh, I think all 48 of us want to – we just want to compete, you know, and – the team aspect just makes it more fun. So I, is it different? You still have to play well to, you know, for your team to do well. So it's, it's a lot of fun. Last week was, it was good for me. I, you know, I told the Niblicks we were going to do well, but we're still in dead last, and we finished fourth. So it's that part of it for me, being an underdog, is a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm in one of those teams ahead of the Niblicks. Um, <laughs> happened no to we, we actually cashed last week for the first time, which was, uh, was a lot of fun. But I think what Harold's saying is that, um, you know, the team element of this is uh, – way more intriguing and fun and I you know talking to all the players 
Um, the team element is something that they're really highly invested in and get a lot out of it and really enjoy kind of, you know, winning as a four and, you know, really enjoying it kind of sharing that experience together. So, um, you know, I think, you know, this golf course this week plays a little differently, I think, from how it plays in February. You know, you know the golf course that the three of us have won on coming out of sort of the winter time here in Saudi Arabia, I think, you know, the golf course is a little drier, a little firmer. It seems a little softer this week coming out of the summer, obviously more water, um, that type of stuff, no overseed. So uh, the golf course certainly uh, plays a little different from, uh, from how it does in February. That's a lot to translate, sorry. No, no worries. <laughs> DJ? Go ahead. Why don't you translate? So uh, I'm not going to translate no, the answers. We're, oh, we're got later part. on. She told us. Um, yeah, you know, for me, yeah, it's uh, you know, it's no different than the the Saudi Invitational that's, you know, that we play in January or end of January, February. You lose to the Niblicks, it'll be different. I'll be talking shit. Well, <laughs> we've already got the number one seed, so it really doesn't matter. <laughs> no comment. Yeah. Well, other than I just want to beat you, so. Uh, but yeah, the, the golf tournament wise, it, you know, the the course is different right now. It's just softer. That's about the only thing. It's in it's in pretty good shape though. It's just soft, which is yeah, kind of weird. You know, playing. You know, usually it's balls running, the fairways are firm, greens, the ball rolls out. But um, other than that, the the tournament's gonna be the same. We got a unbelievable field, you know, like we do every week. And yeah, I mean, if you want to win, you're gonna have to really golf your ball well. Thank you guys. Uh, so Al Thani Juan. Okay. Ahmed is from Al Madina and he's asking all of you guys as well uh, in terms of the weather. So, you guys just came from Bangkok, uh, quite a different weather. And we have now uh, this weather here in Jeddah. Uh, in terms of, of the weather, is it going to be any different in your opinion? I'm going to lose a lot more weight for sure. It's hot. I mean, yeah, I it was know. hot last week. It's yeah. hot this week. Yeah. It's, it's actually like yesterday, like lunchtime or noon or whatever, I went out. I played in the morning. It was extremely hot. But I went out like around noon and hit some balls. It was actually way nicer than it was last week. Just, yeah, I think the wind, you know, when the, the wind, wind blows, it, comes it makes off the it bearable. Until you, down, yeah. but, you yeah. get to 16 and that wind's blowing and you're like, what? Yeah, but that's what, <laughs> that's what makes that hole good. <laughs> yeah. For you, you can hit it. Uh, Juan, so Althani Yusuf. Okay. Hey, so Althani Shabab. Thank you, guys. That will be it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it.